go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Star Wars Minute. It's your daily podcast in which we analyze, we scrutinize, and we celebrate The Last Jedi, one steamy minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Allison Rosen from AllisonRosen.com. And I'm Daniel Quantz from DanielQuantz.sad. <laughs> oh. Now, you don't actually own that, Pete. Now you have to actually, you have to invent the Stop. sad. Oh, wait, is that uh, an actual website? <laughs> it's another bit that somehow I got committed to, and now look at us. Now look at our finances, yeah. because we're paying for all these ridiculous, I, every once in a while I get an email, and it's like, oh, like, you know, so-and-so dot, you know, uh, fun dot whatever you know like some ridiculous thing that somebody said or like a really long sentence dot com that somebody made up and i was like oh. yeah i bought it because it's funny and then it's you know like so and so got renewed i was like oh. <laughs> guess who has to buy really long sentence dot com now good work there, there now go. i regret that i just said what my real website is what a wasted oh that's okay though because i'm gonna come back on other days this week Whoa. and i can have right. fun right. once then there you go. yeah, yeah. Just try try to keep it to, you know, don't make up too many per go, because then I have to, we'll have to spend a lot on the episode. I we'll, won't. Oh, my God. I our, love your coffee our, mug, our Biggest oh, budget ever. Um, oh, look at that. So you can well, see that if you're at uh, StarWarsMinute.com slash YouTube. Yes, right. exactly. I put Just on start. makeup and showered and everything. Don't, mm. don't let it be in vain, you guys. <laughs> I only showered from the waist up, so save water. <laughs> That's, That's been the main thing about the pandemic is all the water I've saved by only showering from, for me, it's like just neck up, basically. Oh, yeah, nice. Now yeah. you just uh, lean into the shower. Is that how that works? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or do you have plastic, like a plastic bag around the rest of your body? Right. I wrap um, an old shower curtain around my oh, okay. like torso down, and then I get it. It's really, it, it takes more work and it takes longer, but it makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. ultimately it does save water. I yeah. guess, but uh, you know, well, so now I can't wait to see what, how we all look throughout the rest of the week. But for now, let's talk about minute number ninety-one. Minute number ninety-one starts off with uh, the shield status indicator light going off, much to uh, someone's frustration, and it ends a minute later with the space iron coming down to get the wrinkles out of a first order blouse. Hmm. This truly is the best minute of the movie. I want to thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. I've, it, the Iron Minute, you get the Iron. Uh, you well, get Iron Minute is a different show. Mm -hmm. You get Holdo's line that I enjoy. <laughs> so this is well, a good minute. So starting from the back and going reverse forward, um, the the Iron bit I, I've seen as noted, uh, as confirmed as a, as a tribute to Hardware Wars. Are you guys familiar with Hardware Wars? Nope. I knew I'd seen this. It felt very familiar to me. And this now... will be the first of many nopes for me. I just need to get this out of the way. I am like someone who doesn't understand football going on an NFL podcast. I, mm. in the mm. same way that football, when I watch it, <clears throat> and I know that sports is not the same as Star Wars at all, but in the sense that like I don't really get either of them that much. When things start going fast, I become mesmerized. And I find it hypnotic, but I, I have trouble following the action. So I did see this. I've seen the movies. I basically get what's going on. But like my level of Star Wars literacy is going to be far below yours. So I hope that I represent the outsider's perspective. Hmm. Yeah. I think and, that's, and no, uh... I haven't seen Hardware Wars. <laughs> As the outsider. You, you, I would yes. be surprised if you had. Yeah, it would be weird. So I'm going to assume any time you like, oh, yeah, when Spock shows up and does that thing, I'm going to assume that anything you get wrong is just you trolling the fans to get them angry. That, That's that, right. Like you said right. that you get, to, yeah. you get to play on the NFL. And they're I loved Laura listening. Dern as Hondo. There you go. <laughs> Hondo with her green hair and her super <laughs> short neck. <laughs> no, no, nothing acting. you said was true. What is the line? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, right. Everything you just said was <laughs> false. Was well. What's well? No, I don't Th know. That me. line comes Nothing up twice, do? right? Now I'm forgetting what it is. It's contagious. But I think it's twice yeah. because I think it's when Ray well, explains what the force is and then it comes up again near the at end. at least twice. Yeah. Right. This is not going to go the way you think is the That's original one. why. But yeah. then there's also, oh, yeah, it's amazing. Every word in that Every... sentence was wrong. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's very negative, that Luke guy. Yeah. yeah. Bit of a grouch. 
So, uh, so Allison, then let me ask you, as a casual Star Wars fan, yeah, uh, do, uh, you might have heard that uh, Luke Skywalker being in the desert got a lot of people angry. Did, did that? Uh, did you? Did you care about it? Were you? Did it seem like a good character choice? I know I'm picking something. Luke's not even in this minute, so maybe I should just move on to something else. No, I appreciate the chance to think about this. I had no feelings about him being in the desert. Mm-hmm. Why? Why were they upset about it? Well, not, not the desert per se, but in in isolation, in on exile. A, They're saying yeah. like he Luke's a hero; he wouldn't just quit. The you know, old man, a, kind of uh, hermit Luke, kind of giving up on the world and living by himself on an island with some yeah. some dinosaur maids and some some friendly birds. Right, some books that he didn't quite read. Um, mm. yeah. I didn't have strong feelings about it. However, are we? Do we spoil stuff? You can. Yes. At this point, we did. We tried not to for the first couple of movies, given okay. that everybody had seen them. <laughs> and then now, then we gave up with the prequels because they happened already. So now, well, yes, you can talk. I about didn't anything. really understand when Luke died. I didn't really understand. Like, how do they know he died, <clears throat> and why did he die? I didn't really understand that he survived that attack of all those things being shot at him, and then later he just like boom, he's done. I guess I ne- I didn't think about it that much, but. It doesn't quite make sense. Luke's arc doesn't quite make sense to me. Like, who is punch so? M- Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's all right. What happened to make him so curmudgeonly and out of and 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 isolated? I guess I do have that question. Well, first of all, let me tell you that dying of sadness runs in his family, so <laughs> that it's entirely possible that that's. Um, but the, the the. Lead up that when Ray, you know, at the end of the last movie, the end of uh, uh, the Force Awakens, it seemed kind of like, oh, this historic moment. Ray hands off the lightsaber, and then in this one, we get the he just tosses it behind him, and then he slowly, as Ray is pestering him to be trained, he explains, you know, kind of what his he started a Jedi school, and uh, his nephew went bad in his Jedi school, and Ben he, Ben Driver, yep, yep, and he um. He saw the failure in, in, you know, the, the, basically he was afraid of, of history repeating itself with, with, you know, his father, Darth Vader, another spoiler, mm-hmm. was, you know, in training and then went evil. And he was like, oh no, this is, I've seen this before. I can't do it. It's, it's not on me to do all this. I, I, it's not, I'm going to be a failure if I do this. So let me just go away. That's the short version, basically. Yeah. I feel like that. I mean that works, right? That I feel like we've seen those kind of plots before. You saw movies. it twice Maybe. before in Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> both yeah. Yoda so, and Obi Wan, both kind okay. of let's say, you know what? Forget mm-hmm. it. Let's just yeah. I'm out. I'm out. You're gonna break bad. I'm out. Okay, so <laughs> that that works for me. I don't have yeah. strong feelings anymore. All yeah. right, glad we we Re- we resolved those feelings. it. <laughs> yeah. So Pete, you loved Hardware Wars growing up. For you, it was almost like part of the original trilogy. I did because because you know as we've said in that kind of time frame between when the movies came out and let's say you know the 10th anniversary more or less you it was hard to get Star Wars you couldn't really see Star Wars but Hardware Wars you could rent all the time cuz nobody liked that <laughs> except for me <laughs> um and so you know you could rent Hardware Wars and kind of you know vicariously um live through bits and pieces of it um and then it was, and it was on a tape with, it was a compilation of uh, spoofs. It was uh, yeah, hardware. How would you Wars. describe it? What, how, like the way you described the the plot of the Last Jedi? How would you describe <laughs> like what what Hardware Wars is? But uh, just minute ninety one <laughs> of Hardware. I, it's <laughs> it's it's only about three minutes long or something like that, yeah. and it's a it's basically a loose, rough parody of the basic bullet points of the original Star Wars, but with lots of um, Mad Magazine-style kind of pun names. You know, there's Ham Salad and Fluke Starbucker and Augie Ben (laughs) Augie. Um, But then all the special effects, you know, the spaceships and all that are actual pieces of hardware. So they just dangle like an egg beater in front of a black piece of felt, and and it's um, humorous. And uh, at least when you're, you know, six, it's great. I, Daniel, we need to rent the, or I stream this. Find you probably, it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it it's on YouTube. On t- yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, but yeah, it was uh, the same guy made Hardware Wars and um, 
closet cases of the nerd kind. Oh my God, I remember that. A little bit longer form kind of, uh, and uh, Pork Lips Now, which is an Apocalypse yeah. Now parody, which- I remember um, all of these. See, there you go. Yeah. Oh, and, and Bambi Meets Godzilla was stuck in there, which is the animated short, which is- Where is this genius now? What is he, you know, um, is he the head of uh, Universal <laughs> or something? Surely yeah. he must be dead by now. Oh. Um, I know he did, ended up just working on actual Star Wars. He did some stuff for Return of the Jedi at, because everybody was a fan of Hardware Wars. Um, <laughs> let me look him up in the background while you, uh, American filmmaker Ernie Faselius. That's a good way of describing him. He is alive. Um, what else has he done? Perfect Other works. Oh man, in the mid 60s, he performed with the San Francisco band Earth Mother and the Final Solution. <laughs> that wow. Does he hate Weird Al? Like Weird Al had the career that he wanted. <laughs> oh. But he was also a founding member of the band Mystic Knights of the Oingo Boingo. Oh. Which which evolved into Oingo Boingo. He wrote wow. the song Hipsters on Parade. So he Danny Elfman. Yeah. Um so look, oh, and he's continued to whittle mechanically animated carved caricatures and automata, which he displays in traveling galleries called The Marvelous Mechalodeon and the Crankabout Mechanical Theater. I'm loving this guy. Yeah, it's, it's uh, everything I, I wish I had uh, read his Wikipedia article before. I would have been... Uh, Asked him I, to come on instead of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, there's time still. Oh, wow. He also <laughs> was the, the... He was contracted by Earl Vickers of Atari to do the voices for the video game, video arcade game Gauntlet. So oh, all the, just the like, voice of our childhood. Valkyrie is. is about to die. That was him. That was him. Wow. Warrior needs I'm, food badly. I'm I'm astounded now, and I'm I thank you guys for allowing me to to go on that journey of discovery. See, it was worth it. It was. So well, uh, of, oh, I was just say journey of discovery. I just want you to know, I really went on the journey with the iron spaceship because I was like, oh my god. It's a spaceship that looks just like an iron. Oh my God, it is an iron. You know, I mean, <laughs> they it. baited that hook and I just got, I bit it. It's I'm, good, it's I'm hoping you really did say that out loud the whole time. Yeah. I did. I mean, Not just in your head. <laughs> I, I yelled it at the top of my lungs. Right. Every yeah. time you see something in a movie, you're like, that's a car. Oh, wait a minute. It's a robot. <laughs> you you <gotta> say <laughs> out loud what it is exactly. that's going on. It's yeah. all on the surface with me. Mm -hmm. now, you would think that they would realize that steaming those uniforms would be a lot more It'd be better for the material than ironing, right? It's Daniel a bit of a, owns a clothes steamer. I'm just saying. Something about him. I'm just saying. You can, you can easily singe the fact. It's probably a polyester, space polyester of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, Do I don't you, know. Could be. You we think that's be. the fabric they had long ago in yeah. a galaxy far, far away? You think they have polyester? We should see. Yes, there's do. the visual dictionary. The Last Jedi visual dictionary. We can see okay. if there's any notes on Ooh. the fabric. They do um, talk about the droid. The droid that is doing the ironing is an SO-1P. So it is a droid, not a not a piece of machinery. This oh. uh, this just seems like it's be a kind of uh, okay droid to have, the droid that took care of your clothes for you. Yeah. How yeah. Sure. how sentient do we think it is? I well, thought it's... it was a machine, so I'm surprised. Well, we're getting into that hazy area. It's listed as a fifth degree automaton. So it's mm. basically like the simplest possible droid there is. It's just doing clothes. It doesn't have a personality or anything like mm. that. So right. maybe it's like uh, Ernie Faselli has made it because it's, it's an automaton. Oh, <laughs> I think you're saying, it's not <laughs> sentient it. like Ernie Faselli. <laughs> yeah, it's a whittled, a whittled automaton. Whittled miniature automaton. Yeah, exactly. He'd probably be proud to see such a device associated yeah. with the parody of his movie. So mm. that was just like a little winking joke for us i i think so i don't know if it was for us but it was well, i mean like, they definitely even if you've never seen hardware wars it definitely works as a joke where you, like you said you think it's an iron and then it turns out that it's uh because it, it, it wasn't really necessary to the story or the plot to know that these clothes are pressed so i no, feel like well, right it no, was just no, a little bit yeah. of like tee hee you yeah. know it's just See, telling us where they were yes right it was right. a it was a, a humorous transition Although, if anything, it seems like, you know, or it's kind of where they got the clothes, too. So it's, they didn't go the traditional route of knocking people out. They just, <laughs> they just yeah, went right. snuck or, into uh, the, uh, the laundry. Yes. Right. I like. Who it. knows how many people it took them to, to get to that point. To get in there. Yeah. 
Right. So plus that that's the way to go too. If you knock out some people, you might not get the right size. You're going to end up with you know things yeah. that don't yeah. fit, like Indiana Jones. That's true. Yeah. This is a smart move. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Should we get back to? Should we move on to Holdo and Poe and the gang? Um, Let's do it. I had w- one note about the the. Uh, d- we talked about it a little bit, but the display is there. I just do like the blend of kind of old school and new school on the the uh, first order little console there. Mm-hmm. That it looks looks kind of like an old school kind of Star Wars seventies you know uh, display, but it's also got some some new fangles to it. And, are you uh, talking uh, about the fangles. control thing that? like DJ messed with or are you talking about the thing that was like an auto harp with all the little like almost the red like lines. a guitar auto harp at the very beginning of this minute that one right yeah, yeah the that, auto harp yes okay so the the force field on the uh the big ship is just bands of force field instead of one big force field couldn't they slip between the the two the tines or is it yeah it seems like know. it that you know it's so big that it needs like a series of Force I feel like it was just it. like an indicator, personally. Right. Like it was just maybe those are like the generators of the mm. force field, and sh- it was just showing that that one was a little bit on the fritz. But right. that would seem like a bad, bad design if you kind of had like, well, you know, it's like you know, it's like like Wi-Fi. Like it has a bunch of Wi-Fi repeaters going across it to, right. you know, and like if you knock one of them out, there'll be a little zone there where you can kind of wiggle right. through and not yeah. get a dead spot. Yeah. From personal experience, I can say that's not going to work if they have to connect with someone via Zoom. There you mm-hmm. go. <laughs> on the ship. If the pandemic hits and they have to do some ship Zoom podcasts, I recommend against that. Right. Well, Snoke's podcast is, is... <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. I've never been a fan of the production values on that show. I have Snoke, things to Snoke say about how disgusting sucks. his face is, but I don't think he, he's in this minute, so I'll hold it. Speaking uh, of hold the, it, hold out. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, before nice. I was going to uh, bring up uh, Imperial Officer Rumatar Shea. He is the mm. one who looks at the uh, screen and is like, what? And uh, played by actor Akshay Kumar. So mm. his name, the character's name is Rumatar Shea. His name is Akshay Kumar. So mm. getting a little bit of... Uh, he should have been like, what, what? Like, and said something, <laughs> you know, out loud. So he'd be memorable. Like Allison at the movies. I think <laughs> <the same time. laughs> I've been kicked. You have no idea how many theaters I've been kicked out of. Oh my God. Um, yes. I saw him and I thought, do I need to know who this is? I don't think so. I mean, no offense to this guy. He seems lovely. I'm just saying, you know, I got to kind of do triage on my understanding all the time. Sure. Yeah, I, I yeah. feel uh, bested because normally I, I try to track the Imperial and First Order officers and here. Mm-hmm. Alex uh, beat me to the punch with that one. Well, so we're a team. I apologize to everyone at home <laughs> who had their money on you. Yeah. Star Wars minute. Holdo. 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 A stormtrooper and a who now are doing a what you say? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> <laughs> Holdo, here's a who now. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, it is a little bit, it's a little bit goofy. Mm. Um, and I also think it, it, it this whole scene in general for her, not the best take they could have gotten from noted good actor, Laura Dern. <laughs> like it's, mm-hmm. she's good yeah. at things. And then this take, I'm like, mm, I'm not feeling it. So you much. feel like she should have yelled, I will not not be rich. <laughs> <laughs> she should have. Yeah. Just anything from, she should have taken off her sunglasses and just stared in amazement or something. Or... <laughs> I like her commitment though. She's a pro. Yeah. I feel like this whole movie, she's, she's in it. The wigs yeah, doing like half I, the work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Overall, I, I'm I'm happy with her here, and I believe some of the stuff with her and and uh, you know when she's got kind of a one to one with Poe, but the, this I, I think this is not the. Was it not? Did she not seem incredulous enough for you? Um, <laughs> partially, and it, but not just this line, but this this scene where she's kind of uh, you know where she says something about like we don't have time for this, and we gotta right. you know it just seems a little bit like right. I'm not, you gambled. I'm not believing you. Maybe it is. Maybe it's, she doesn't seem flustered enough. She should be. When she was like, you gambled our last, re- I'm messing up the lines, but like our last remaining whatever on bad odds. I thought that was weird linguistically, like to refer mm. to this as bad odds. Oh, bad odds was a planet that there was a horrible massacre. You missed it. That was in <laughs> the beginning of the movie. 
Well, this makes sense. Should have seen that coming, I guess, living on that planet. But how does she know it's such bad odds? I mean, but maybe it is. I don't know. Well, I don't understand. From a story perspective, like, she was just told that, you know, Finn, who is not just a stormtrooper. I mean, they know who that guy is. And Rose, arguable whether they know who she is. Right. Uh, They do know who Finn is, right? Well, it's only been he's only been with the resistance for like three days or something. So, oh, is that right? And, but and, he was famous to Rose. But yeah. Holdo might, you know, she was part of a, she was on her own ship, you know, part I of a convoy. It might feel have like been the guy. The guy just got injured from fighting with the. I'm trying to remember the last movie, but didn't he get injured fighting with Kylo Ren? I mean, like, right. I feel like they at least should know who he is, and. For her to just dismiss the plan, which seems like a legit plan, just like we're not even going to bother with that. Like you have two people on that ship who might be disengaging the tracking device in a minute. Shouldn't you at least see if that works? I just didn't I didn't quite get her dismissal of of that entirely like that. I didn't I what I didn't get about it was what like it's OK. So her plan is to get everyone on the shuttles and get everyone off the ship. Mm-hmm. And then Poe comes to her and says, wait, you have to stop. We're going to jump to light speed instead because because Finn and Rose are over there, blah, blah, blah. And I can understand her being baffled and annoyed, but it doesn't yeah. seem like it would alter the plan. She had like, OK, well, if that works, great. But in, in the meantime, everyone keep loading the ship. Like, why? Right. Why right. does she all like, Arr! I mean, other than the fact that, I mean, at this point, Poe already should have been in the brig. So it's it's kind of <laughs> like. Yeah. He's I think that's the it. garbage cans around, you know, like that's like <laughs> right. that's it like, seems some... like it seems like she should just go, okay, we'll we'll give it until this time, and if it doesn't work, then we're doing yeah, our plan. guards take them away, that kind yeah. of thing, right? Calgon, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I think that Qui Gon, <laughs> take them. I think the uh, the yeah, it is. It's like he's you know, uh, it's his basically his third time kind of throwing a fit, more or less, mm-hmm. and it's you know like like with my kids, like if if. The third time they're pestering me for something, it could be the most yeah. reasonable thing in the world. I'll just be like, "No, you can't have a carrot." Like, and I'm like, sh- "Of course they should have a carrot." Like, but it's mm-hmm. just like, sh- "Shut up right now!" Like, it's, you know, like he just keeps busting in to be like, "We're doing it. You're doing it wrong. We're doing this instead." And it's it's like, you know, so she's uh, just sick of him. Sick of him I, is uh, right. BS. Yeah, I mean, you you're right because I know his plan. I know, or at least at this point in the movie, think it's going to work. And still, I'm on her side. Okay, good. Me too. Because I, oh my God, you God, this dude. I found myself on rewatch just, I I don't know how how the fan base feels about this character, but like, I just do not like Poe. Like, he's arrogant. I don't find him, I don't know anything about him except he's like a hot headed flyboy. And he had a relationship with uh, uh, Carrie Russell, uh, which, you know, kudos, right? But like, sure. But that's and then he was a spice runner. Carrie Russell was in these movies. She's in the next one. She's in the next one uh, behind a like, helmet most I, of the time. But he, what's there to like about him? I um, I like him. Okay, I I like him. Yeah. Um, you know he's charming certainly, and he mm-hmm. when he's not arguing, you know, uh, uncontrollably, which is kind of the way he <laughs> is painted here. You know, and I I, I think he. That kind of, uh, you know, goofy, he's kind of like a Han Solo-esque character, but more on the team. You know, he's not like rogue, like he's going to go, uh, it's kind of, you know, Han Solo is essentially split into two for this movie. He's more like Captain Kirk. A little bit, yeah. Wait, who's um, the other one? Finn? Well, yeah, Finn and, and Poe both kind of take elements where, yeah. where, you know, Finn kind of always just is, uh, for the beginning, at least in the beginning, is always just kind of looking out for himself or you know, once he kind of attaches to his friends, he's just looking out for them. He's not on board with the rebellion mm-hmm. necessarily, the resistance. Um, whereas Poe is very resistance, but also he's the kind of cocky flyboy. He's like um, a blue blue light special, blue flame special, whatever they called Keanu Reeves in Point Break. Oh. At the very beginning. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You're a real blue light, blue flame special. I don't even yeah. know what it means, but it's what you guys are talking about. I he's guess like it, top when gun. I think about it, like Han wasn't given a whole lot of you know character development either right i think it was just the charisma of harrison ford uh but yeah for some reason he just rubbed me the wrong way on rewatch it's weird i didn't have that feeling the first time yeah 
No, it, it it's understandable, and they they do you know their characters kind of twist and turn a bit, yeah. in ways that it took me a while to warm up to Poe, but I like him now. Um, not right now, not in this scene. I think he's wrong, of course, still. But I also I mean, he I should like be the executed. character in general. <laughs> yeah, he did. Right? I like, like him, but on. he really should be before a firing squad by this. Point. Yeah, I mean, like what he did is <laughs> up. Yeah, I would kill him with my own bare hands, but I do like him. <laughs> like um, him from limb to limb, but I find yeah. him charming. Um, he definitely. Uh, well, well. So he in this, it, it's this minute, right, that he stages a yeah, yeah, yeah the, the the, guns. an actual mutiny, mutiny. Which the the there's a separate Wikipedia page for mutiny on the Radis, which is um, a fantastic that that should be its own little movie. Um, that's the name of this ship, the Radis. Um, and, uh, Does it have the list of all the other conspirators? I was yeah, hoping you the... had that. I, I I found, of course, there's Cato Coconix and Kai Thrinali. Mm-hmm. Which wait, which one is the kind of horse face alien? The Muppet, yeah. That's Kai Thrinali. That Kai Thrinali. It, it, it's frustrating <laughs> because that race was uh, invented for the Force Awakens, and they're called a Bednado, and all of the members of that race are their names are Beastie Boys puns or Beastie Boys tributes. How fun. Except for this one mistakenly got tagged with the wrong name at some point, And so he's just not, he's just Kai Thrinali and everybody's like, oh, what? He's like, just what are, the fat boys. What are the other ones? <laughs> yeah. uh, the, well, the first one that we saw was Elo Asti, which is, of course, Hello Nasty. And then mm-hmm. we met uh, earlier in this movie, we met Slow and Low. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to remember. Oh, um, who's You've the got one? a fight. <laughs> Brasmon Key was a he's, an, he's another one who's in I think the end of Force Awakens, and then they've they've gone and made a lot more. They don't name them that, you know. In in the uh, you know J.J. Abrams is a noted Beastie Boys fan, and I think he mm-hmm. just named Elo Asti, and then the the people running the show behind the scenes right. doing the visual dictionaries and stuff like that, like Pablo Hidalgo, they're just doing it in tribute to that. They're like, oh, let's see if we can keep it going, and then and then they We're already fun. dropped the ball. One, and then one they, movie yeah, in. exactly. <laughs> well, now they the they need to you know. Uh, um, Ad Rock yep. and Mike D need to get back together and do a tribute song to MCA called Kai Thrinali somehow or, or <laughs> somehow work that, you know, make it kind of retroactively. <laughs> you you know, they could freeze a bird it, use some old like voicemails of Adam Yout. Into that. So there's an un- there's a uh, unidentified l- blonde lady. She was the one I was not able to identify, but I think the other the gentleman there with the scruffy beard is Nodin Chavdry. Nodin <laughs> Chavdry, Nodin. Who's, who's later on in the Visual Dictionary. Uh, Nodin. He's, he's in Can, there, played by actor Navin Chowdhury. Mm. Navin Chowdhury. I wonder Chowdhury. how they came up with that name. Yeah, Nodin really. Chowdhury. Can I shoehorn in this moment my sure. big revelation as to how George Lucas came up with the name Lando Calrissian? This is if this, good. If this has not already something. been... Yeah. I mean, a lot of these things, I haven't been plugged into the fan base. You know, I basically grew up with it and then... And then it was just in the background of my head swirling around, but I wasn't like in communities. So I don't know what y'all know. (laughs) All right. But I realized that there was a morning when George Lucas was having breakfast and he was trying to come up with the name of this character and he had his raisin toast and his butter. And he looked at the butter and it said Lando Lakes and the Mm. toast said California raisins. Mm. And it was Lando. Cal Rizian. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> That's a good one. I just I, I have to do my part. I like it. Yeah. Well, we'll have to uh, we have to mail that to uh, Tony Thaxton. Will be happy to know that the California raisins were mentioned. He gets. <laughs> it's he all just perked up him. right now. Yeah. Somehow he just his ears were tingling. He's like, yeah. "What's going on? <laughs> Are they canon?" Tony. And the California, California raisins. Tony <laughs> should be canon. To- Tony, Tony is kind is. of yeah. There's the Dunn's <laughs> Thaxton is a is a a bird, I believe. Uh, oh, right, right. Okay, yeah. dumb person question. Someone explain. I know what can- I was. I majored in English. I know what can- the canon is, but explain how you nerds are using canon. It's like a big metal tube that you put something <laughs> in the end and shoots. <laughs> right. like how well, t shirt. And I've heard Daniel. I've heard you and Tony kind of just toss it around, but I don't exactly get how it relates to something like Star Wars and the Star Wars universe. Well. Originally, it was just kind of whatever they came out with was Star Wars, and then at some point, um, 
they a little while ago. I, I I don't remember what if we had issues with canon and not canon before the. Uh, Allison, before you the need break. to understand. Yeah, you need to understand that there's like tons of books and comics. No, I, I get that. And, yeah, like extended stories yeah. outside the movies. Right. And so is canon anything that guides. has ever been published? Canon is anything as that Star Wars? counts. Anything that counts. Right. So who decides that? Well, Lucas when Paul. they, well, he said and adjusted his tie. Um, <laughs> Actually, when they, um, I, I think it was either right before the Disney purchase or right after, but they basically said, okay, uh, everything that happened that wasn't in the movies doesn't count anymore. Um, so only the movies and and a couple of the animated um, kind of shows that had the stamp of approval count. Uh, then everything else is now legends. In, in air quotes, um, yeah. which, apocrypha. To use, yeah, but, to use which, a more literary version of it. Uh, people who grew up with that stuff were outraged, but then also they've brought a lot of it back in because they never said it was. They basically just instead of saying, "Okay, this is not the story," they said, uh, "This is the." Uh, they said, "This is." As far as we know, it's not the story. So that now they're like, all right, when, when somebody else comes along, they want to, hey, I want to do a story about Chewbacca. They're like, all right, here's what is official with Chewbacca, and here's all the stuff that people used to say about Chewbacca. Here's all the published stuff. You're free to use the, you know, the previously published stuff as a jumping off point, or if you want to just do the official, stick with the official, you can do that. Right. Got it. That's Got canon. It. So right. Tony is, Tony's bird is canon? Yes. Tony's bird is canon. My uh, my technician lady, technician from the from the resistance, is as far as we know canon. Alex has a planet. Wow. Mm -hmm. What is um, your planet? You know, I don't remember the name of it. I I think it's like L X Robin Sun or something like that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh okay so um well Allison you already said you're coming back tomorrow so you can use throw out some more domain names for Pete to purchase so I can't wait. Uh, I guess wallet. I will just encourage everyone to go to starwarsminute.com/patreon that's our website we have where you can uh, support the show and uh, get some extra episodes for your troubles so uh, we have those other things. You can get an art print by me. You can go to a sporting ball game with uh, Pete. Uh, all sorts of weird perks uh, you can set your uh, eyes on. So go to StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon and join us tomorrow for another Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. There's my finger. There we go.